Hello, Votoms fans and other large robot fans. So, I actually shot this entire video already, but the microphone didn't record anything. It just recorded static. Maybe the plug wasn't in all the way. In fact, I'm going to pause and see if this thing is recording. Alright, does seem to be recording now. So, essentially I'm going to do this video pretty much backwards because I already finished. So we're going to start as if I finished and then end up back uh, in, to the packaging. Okay, so what we have though is called the Strong Bacchus. And this Strong Bacchus is a, a fighting robot. So the Votoms are basically walking tanks. Uh, they're usually used for military war efforts, and so that's why this guy has a gun. But this one is like an arena fight, a battler. Kind of like that movie, Real Steel, with uh, Hugh Jackman. Okay? So, I have a SHF Figure Arts 6-inch uh, uh, or 12th scale figure in there already. Because, you know, Bruce Lee is a fighter, right? So this is a fighting robot, fighting action figure, and it obviously works. You're not going to be able to fit in a Marvel Legends unless it's a, a small, like, female character. Because Marvel Legends is not 12th scale. They're uh, their own little goofy toy scale. They're more like 7-inch figures. Okay, so, let's see here. Now, what I will say is what I learned is even though these are both used, I don't know how much they were played with, I'm pretty sure even if they were new, these things are so heavy they're not really good for playing and posing. So I actually weighed this one, and it weighed over a kilogram. It weighed over 2.2 .2 pounds. So that's how heavy these guys are. And a lot of that weight actually is up in the top, especially when you add an action figure in there as well. So keep that in mind. For me, they're just going to look like this in my display case. I'm not going to play with these guys. Uh, but I will recommend this. Um, B25 is a brand, and they're known for, like, acid rain toys. But they got the Votoms license, and now they have four different Votoms robots. This is called Marshy Dog. I did weather the heck out of this. That's why it looks so dirty. But they do look slightly dirty originally from B25. Now, these have a lot of great posability, and you don't feel like it's going to fall apart, or you don't feel like it's going to break on you. So if you actually want a robot or a mecha that you can play with and pose... You know, this is the way to go. In fact, like, you can just pose this guy on one foot and it's not going to fall apart. It's not going to collapse. If I pose one of these one kilogram robots on one foot, it's going to fall down eventually. Another one, the one that got me into Votoms in the first place, is Takara Tomitech. They make these 148 scale Votoms. And these are called Actic Gear. They have a line of Votoms robots called Actic Gear. And these little guys... And the other ones have all the features as this big giant one. The cockpit's open, you know, the optics move around and rotate, and you can put it into crouch down mode and all that stuff. So these are quite fascinating, but they are so small, a lot of the parts are very fidgety. So I, I actually like the, uh, the B25s, the 128 scale. These the most for playability. Okay? All right, back to this... Uh, robot here we might as well get the accessories out of the way so it comes with this giant standard uh scope dog gun even though this is a battling robot arena battling it gives you accessories as if you wanted to actually have it for military actions the gun does come apart i went and poster board puttied a lot of these already because they were so loose they just fell apart so this barrel comes off but these things don't seem to move but they are a different color and then uh you have this foregrip that can pivot only to one side, though. This magazine does come off as well. It's got a little T thing, and I, again, I have poster board putty to keep it keep it uh, together. And then this thing just snaps off. It's like a flex fit here with some tabs, a little shoulder stock. I guess you can put it the shoulder stock in either way. Uh, anyways, and then this little uh, safety switch here does move, but the... Actual detailing isn't very great. It doesn't show like a number of bullets or even a S or a red. So not much color on these things, but you know, you get what you get. I will also say I'm missing a part in this thing. Uh, it's a double antenna. The antenna you see on this guy. He's got two little antenna there. That part is missing from this. Again, this is bought used locally, so 
But it does come with this extra visor, which is like a double lens visor. But unfortunately, there's no detail behind this green lens. It's just flat back there. It would have been cool if they like molded in some, some details. But oddly, they put details on the back. So, you know, like TV screens or something like that. I don't know why they want to just mold stuff in behind the lens. And then it comes with these little covers to cover up the hinge. Uh, so that's what's going on there. And then it has this little antenna that you're supposed to glue to the top of the head. It's supposed to be like that, but I know better. If I glue this on, it's just going to break off and leave a glue mark, so I'm not going to do that. Comes with two extra magazines for the rifle, or you can actually, I believe, put these on the armor plates on the hips, which I've done like on the screen guy. There's a magazine there. Uh, I don't know if this... This is a floating piece, but I don't think it's meant to move. I, I feel like it'll break if I try to move it. So I'll leave that alone. It does come with uh, two open hands, or not really open hands, but grippy hands. And you'll notice the thumbs are a separate piece. And that's to help get like the gun handle in there. And once you have the gun handle in there, you pop on you know, the, the thumb. But um, these are like a hard rubber and I cannot get them on the uh, pegs of that thing. You could do it if you put this in like hot water, it'll soften up and then you can press it on. But because this is a fighting robot, I'm gonna just leave it with the fists on. I don't want it to look like a war robot. The war robots, like this green scope dog, has these spikes that go on the side of the feet and that's for pivoting and gripping surfaces. So you can put these on this this blue one, but uh, again, I'm not going to do that because I already have the green scope dog with these. Uh, it came with these on it. These are uh, just some boxes that are on the side armor plates on the hip, but I have since replaced them with uh, magazine holding uh, pieces. So these go into a baggie. And then it came with two of these little blanking plates that actually you can remove the hooks on the back and uh, just blank them off with these plates, but I'm too lazy to do that. Okay, so those are the accessories, but bear in mind I am missing the double antenna, so it's not there. All right, so, and I'm gonna leave this, uh, this helmet on, or whatever, top. So it's just a friction fit here. Let me uh, pose this down here. It is nice that it has a lot of, you know, extra plastic bits, like, hand grabs and the like, control boxes and you can see the details behind these optics uh, are a little bit different than the other one and then you can see on the back of the helmet there's a little clear green thing here i'm going to guess that's like a rear view camera bunch of molded in details some vents and rivet marks um so yeah that double antenna is supposed to snap in there i guess but i don't have it again but this visor does you know go up and down you can see, you know, the details in there. And then it's got a roll cage for the uh, optics here. And you can slide the optics left and right on this slot, which is blanked off. And then the optics have nice clear lenses, all three of them. There's a blue, red, green. And you can rotate it. And if you look behind, you have three different molded details. So it's pretty cool, you know. A lot of uh, cool stuff going on here, just this, with this. And so since this is a fighting robot, it has a roll cage for the optics. Uh, and it has to go in with this on the bottom. You can see the length difference, right? So the flat is on the top and the curved is on the bottom. It is weird to me that they wouldn't ro design this roll cage to accommodate the optics over here. You know, why wouldn't they just make the roll cage come out here in like an arc? But whatever, it's a cartoon. They weren't, who knows. So anyways, it's cool that it can clear it, right? And then again, you can spin it around. All right, so that's the head. I'm gonna take it apart because this thing is a kilogram. It's so heavy. If I hold it all at once, it's gonna fall apart and smash on the glass table and I don't wanna break any parts. So back up here. Uh, one thing I will do though, is show you Bruce here through that visor so you can snap that closed and it's just like up there but yeah if you pop open the visor you can see the character inside so that's what's cool 
about these 12 scale ones because 12 scale figures now you can buy ones with real cloth clothing and some of the head sculpts look real i mean this this that's a pretty good impression of, of bruce lee i think all right so this torso comes off at a 90 degree angle it's got little teeth down here and uh the arm joints do come out i put poster board putty in there because it's a little too loose and it is heavy, so it's just easier, I think, to take it apart and, and look at it. So these things do come out, and there's a screw back there if you want to take it apart. And the reason why you might want to take it apart is you want to get these hooks off and cover those hooks, which is the blanking, blanking plate. Sorry, the focus is always going off. This is not a proper studio here. This is my just my dining table. Uh, these things are so big. I, I can't fit them in my photo booth, so that's why the the setting is different. Okay, so yeah, this on the war ones they put on backpacks. That's why it has hooks here. But again, you can swap it out. Uh, in the back, this panel does come off. I did put poster board putty again in there to keep it from falling out inadvertently. But there's some radiators and you know other greebly effects there. So here's my poster putty. I want to reshape it so I can grab this again. Before, when I shot the video the first time, this thing just kept falling off. And in fact, a lot of these parts just kept on falling off as I was fondling it. Okay, so this thing has two teeth. And if you squeeze it a little bit, it really helps get this in and out. And there's some molded details, some panels and stuff like that. And you can see now Bruce's feet here. So... Okay, but you have to pull it off at an angle or perpendicular to this plane. Don't pull it out sideways or don't pull it downwards. You'll see the teeth are at 45 degree angle, uh, 45 degree angle, and then it's hard to get in, so I squeeze it a little bit, and that helps out. There's a little recess there. I'm not sure why, but it's there. Okay, so that's what's going on with this guy, but let's open this cockpit up. Now, there's a lot of friction here, and that's good because if you want to pose it with the thing up, it's not going to fall down because this is a relatively heavy piece of plastic. So the shocks, the top of the shock body here, the main body is plastic, but the bottom parts are steel, steel rods. And you can just remove this whole thing entirely. There's a little tooth there, and that'll help you get the action figure in and out. So that's what Bruce looks like in here right now. Bruce is a relatively short guy. I think he was like 5'5 five, five or something like that. So he fits in here really well. Okay, so I'm going to take the figure out now. So you can move this control thing forward. Or actually, let's talk about this. These control sticks move up to vertical or horizontal, and they rotate. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, that one just it's just a friction fit, you can see. So I forgot the poster board putty that one. Uh, I don't have the proper grabbing hands on Bruce anyways, but so you can also move this forward. You know, notice it's got two cool little cables stuck to it. So we get Bruce out. And then you can see there's some uh, computer details here and a whole bunch of other painted and molded details, you know, some sort of round switches, vents, tubing. This side is a little bit different, up, at least on this control box here. These two boxes are a little bit different. And then this headrest also even pivots a little bit. I'm not sure if the seat will even come out. Maybe, it, oh, this I didn't expect. So I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. Maybe if you want to repaint this or maybe upholster it with real fabric, you could. So that's pretty neat. All right, uh, now that Bruce's feet are gone. Ooh, what else? Was, oh, that's control stick again. All right, so, well. Pop that back. These feet thing flip up. Just a little articulation, not sure why. I'm gonna guess in the cartoon, I think these there are actually meant to drive the the thing. Maybe, I forget. But it's got two thicker tubes down here that are floating and stuff, so that's a nice detail. Other different colored details and stuff. So it's a really cool cockpit. I really I think it's well done. You could have a lot of, if you were crazy, you could take it apart, add LEDs and a little battery to power them up. That'd be pretty sick. Now, putting this back together is a little bit more difficult. So the underside, not much detail, but, you know, it's not just 
plain plastic either so it's not too bad I guess so first thing I do is I pop in this little this tab but not all the way just so I want to get the shocks close then I try to get this metal in there metal into this one here and then I'll try to push it down more up oh, that one didn't work Okay, and then squeeze it. It's a lot of friction again, but I think that's on purpose to keep the thing from falling down when you want to display it open. All right, so I'm gonna leave this off because it'll just fall off. It doesn't, it's risky though. I think I'd feel more comfortable with it off. So that is the upper torso slash cockpit. Looking at the arms, they seem to be identical left and right. So we'll just talk about uh, the left arm here. So there's a slot with flat spots, and that goes into, you know, this thing here. You can see a little groove. There's a groove on the top and the bottom. And uh, this is what rotates. It doesn't rotate in here. It's just, this rotates, you can see. It's like a peg and a ball up there. And then the whole thing rotates within the upper shoulder. And then on the outside, there's a pivot here for the armor. And that armor has a dangling hanging hook because a lot of these are helicoptered in for military missions. The top of the bicep has a rotary action. These two plates can come off, but I don't understand why. So I just poster board puttied them together. I guess you can maybe take it apart for easier painting, customizing and all that stuff. But I don't think of that adjusts the tension, not that one. But I, I haven't tested it myself. So I'm gonna pop that back. The elbow is just a single joint. So it can't bend more than 90 degrees. That's it. And I th this is just a friction fit, this little blue armor piece. So you can take it apart, paint it, if weather it, whatever. Okay, now, the punch mechanism here. You'll see it's a bit gappy. And the reason why is there's a spring in here. And that spring is uh, pushing it outwards. But I need to have another gun magazine or an arm magazine which uh, hopefully, I put poster board putty on this though, so I don't know if I can get it out easily. All right, here, here's a magazine. It's just, there's a peg holding it into the stuff. But you can push this out and the thing will punch out. Let's, yeah, so that's what's going on. The magazine is actually what locks the arm in place. Hmm, maybe I pushed it the wrong way. No, I don't think so. Why is the magazine not coming out? That's what I'm wondering. All right, so. So that's what it is. You can literally see the spring there. And it's, you know, that's how they, the war ones in this one, they both have a punch feature. So sometimes the robots punch each other out. There's some minor details in there as well, like the shock and some grooves and all that stuff. Okay, if the gap bothers you, I guess you could take that spring out, but I'll leave it alone. All right, so to obviously put it back together, I gotta put in a magazine so it locks in place. Okay, there's a dangling uh, armor plate for the back of the hand. And then the hand itself has a spin function, but it also has a little pivot. I'll take this hand off, and it's not a ball. It's literally like a shaft, and this rubber, hard rubber, just flexes around on that shaft. And then there's some screws holding this into the forearm. All right, so that's what's going on there. So let's put this thing in. Just want to align these grooves. And push on. So yeah, you get full 360 motion there. And, but the tilting, this, this collides with that peg. See, it, that's as far as it goes. It's kind of weird that it doesn't go all the way up to 90. As as high up as that shoulder will, will go, which is kind of weird. All right, but anyways, can't change it. So put these things back together. Again, the poster board putty is to help it keep it from falling out because everything is on this thing is so heavy. All right. Leave it like that because we'll do crouch down mode. So crouch down mode is so like the driver can get in and out of the cockpit on the ground. So let's try to get the lower torso into crouch down mode. 
Well, before we do that, we might as well look at these plates here. So yeah, the armor plates here, just all of them flip up for crouch down mode or just posing. I replaced that side piece. It originally came with these weird, I don't know, they're just blank boxes. So I like these more because they hold these magazines for the uh, punch feature. But it's quite loose, you know, so I have the middle ones with the poster board putty. Okay. All right. Uh, so crouch down mode, you'd have to move this back. And then you want to move the upper legs as far back as possible. Just like that. Now you want to kick the shin forward. Okay. And do that for both sides. And that's essentially crouch down mode. You gotta bend it kind of like that. And then let's see, well, I might have to actually have the torso on it before I do this, but no, actually you don't. So that's how the character is supposed to get in. So like this is a step, you know, you step on and he probably, that's supposed to be a hand grab, and then he climbs into the cockpit and vice versa. I'll never display it like that. I think it looks weird, but it makes sense. You know, if you were actually to make a tank that walks, that's not a bad idea of how to get in and out of it. Okay, so let's put this back up into a normal standing position and then go over more of the articulation. It's so heavy, and I remove that. Okay. So you can see this armor plate actually is a little bit flush. It, it actually recesses into this a little bit, but not all the way. All right. And then you'll see in the hip area, there is a peg and there's a ratchet on that peg. And then I think there must be a ball in here, which I'll open up and show you. So let's get that back. I put poster board putty on this already, but because that stuff is in glue, with a little more force, I can still get it apart. So you can see here, you can adjust the tension, but this is all plastic, so I didn't adjust it a lot. I wish it was metal, you know, then you could torque it down a lot. But that's the rotary tension, and then you can see there's another shaft running through, and that's what allows the thing to pivot in and out like that. Right, so that's what the inner workings of this guy. All right, so you can see that the knee here, there's the joint right there. It's just a big hinge. It's a single, no, it's a double knee actually. That's one hinge, that's the second hinge. But even, even with the double, it doesn't, it still doesn't even bend 90 degrees because the armor is colliding with itself. Oh well, that's fine. I'm not expecting a Rebel Tech articulation out of something like this. It's a walking tank after all. This kneecap will come off. It's just a little friction fit thing. So I put some poster board putty on that. So I'm sure the other side is the same. A little dangling front armor plate for the foot and another one in the back for the back of the foot. These little side plates will come off as well. Some were really loose, so again I added poster board putty. Oh, and this actually pulled off the piece you're supposed to look at. So that is, I didn't know. That's actually friction fit as well. But this has a radiator, a water tank, and maybe some electrical hookups or something like that. So if you want to do a diorama, you know, you could show like a bunch of six inch action figures, you know, mechanics or something working on this thing. So this thing goes into these pegs here, it seems. So I might have to add more poster board putty because I don't want these things just randomly falling off. All right. And sadly, the ankle isn't the greatest. Um, there's cool detail. Let me get a flashlight. It seems like there's two hoses. Hold on, that's too bright. And this plate doesn't move up enough, but there's two hoses running down into the foot, but you can barely see them because of the armor. And then it looks like there's two hinges. This hinge goes front and back, but there's also one running this way, and that's what gives the side rocker 
but the armor collides with itself, so not much side rocker, and also not much front to back articulation. So, but that probably is on purpose again because the thing is so heavy. You know, when you have a half a kilo up here, if it's crouched down too much, it'll just topple over. But the foot does have a ratcheting toe, so that feels pretty secure. And it comes standard with a, oh, there goes the leg. It's a hexagon, and you can see, well, from the other side, that joint, okay? Uh, there are screws. Maybe you can adjust the tension of these things, but again, they're all plastic, so don't torque down on them too hard. I didn't even notice these are exposed uh, in my first review. On the bottom of the foot, there actually is a rolling wheel because these tanks actually scoot along the ground like that. And then, yeah, as mentioned before, this is just a blanked off thing, but there's just some pegs and you can get a fingernail, hopefully under there. Yeah, let's get my fingernail there and try to get this off. So then you can plug in one of these uh, spike things and they actually are directional. They're not this the holes are not equally spaced. So there is a left side and that's not in a right side, but that's not the right one. This is the left side one apparently. There you go. So yeah, you can have a spike feature. But again, this is not a this is an arena robot, so it wouldn't have that. So I'm gonna leave this one on. Alright, some more vent details. You can take off these inner plates as well, as well as the outside. Same stuff though, it's all mirrored. So Okay. Yeah, this is metal though. The thing that actually holds the leg. This is so like die cast metal. Uh, then you can see the armor here is screwed on from the back here. Right. This one even has a two-piece armor. There's details on the inside surface. And same with the back one. Pretty plain detail there though. All right, so yeah, some screws holding that together. And pop that in. There, the leg is back to normal. Let me get this leg back on. So generally you want to have this surface horizontal. Otherwise it's going to be back heavy or front heavy. So I hold the legs in place and then I just twist this until it's horizontal. And in theory, now this guy should be able to stand relatively safe without toppling over. So I gotta take the torso, pop that into the 90 degree, twist it, and now I gotta start. Well, it is kind of back heavy, so hold on. Yeah, these guys are a little sketchy on their, their uh, posability due to the weight. Well, I guess I won't get Bruce in there. You saw Bruce in there already. So let's just pretend Bruce Lee is driving this guy. So we got a punch. Maybe another punch here. I'll try to get in a more punching pose, but... Well, no, see, I'm afraid it's gonna just topple that direction. Get the toe thing down. Maybe I gotta twist that around more. So although that is standing, see, oh, there it goes, the weight, it wants to topple over. Yeah, so. I, I don't, I can't get a really super dynamic pose, unfortunately. That's as good as it's gonna get. All right, so I'm not gonna bother swapping this out. It's, uh. Not to my liking, you know. To me, this looks more like a fighting robot with a roll cage. Okay, let me uh, put these aside. Or you know what? Now, nah, yeah, let's just go into the packaging. Uh, look at that. I might have to put some poster board putty in there as well. Oddly, there's actually details in there, some little rivet marks and stuff like that. So they covered it with a lot of details that you don't even see. See, this scope dog, same thing. This one is even looser. 
So what I ended up doing is jamming a whole lot of putty, even up in the thighs. See? Because I don't want it to fall over and knock over other things in my display cabinet. So this is just white poster mountain putty. Yeah. And so, but man, that thing is heavy. All right. Well, before the box, well, I guess I would have pulled out the instructions. So if you are curious, let's take a look at this guy. Four toms, 112 scale, strong Bacchus, Bacchus, and uh, the sculptor was Ken Ichi Nomoto, advised by Trex, and package design Yuji Hashizume. Uh, I'm just guessing that's how you pronounce it, probably not. The brand is Yamato. I don't know if Yamato's still around. Oh yeah, there's a sticker sheet, and I don't have that either. Yeah, so it would have been kind of cool to actually pop on this flame sticker sheet, you know. Again, it's an arena robot, so it's like motocross with fighting robots. But this had a lot of cool stickers. That would have been nice, but yeah, stickers always look, always look bad. And for some reason, they have all the parts numbered, but they don't really tell you what the parts are. <laughs> so I guess maybe oh, these are part. These are numbers for the stickers. Where to put them? So that is the potential appearance of it. Sorry if I lost focus again. All right. So now this actually does have parts that I'm imagining you can't actually order. So I don't know. Maybe you, if you're going to, I guess you can strip the whole thing down, paint every part a separate color, and then this will help you put it back together. So it is useful, I guess. All right, options and gimmicks. Yeah, that thing comes apart, that comes apart. Uh, so that behind the round vent on the torso, there's a screw holding the thing together, I guess, but I didn't mess with it. I was telling you you can adjust, take it out, and take out the thing for the arm. Again, uh, probably for repainting. And then what is this? Yeah, the shocks are attached to that thing. But this is the start part where you want to replace the backpack hooks and put in the blanking plates. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's what it looks like with the blanking plates. There you go, blanking, 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 and hooks, back to hooks. The armor, the hand articulation, not too much. The arm punch thing, arm punch thing, swapping out. You can put the magazine on the thigh if you want. So, mostly all the stuff I talked about, uh, you know, it actually looks like the angle, ankle comes down for more articulation. So, my bad. Oh, darn it. I guess I'm missing these. These are missing. Those exposed bolts I saw. Uh, there were supposed to be covers for them, but they're gone. Oh, well, one of the problems about ordering used things, you know. Used things don't always have the parts you want. So, like that, that's the antenna that's missing. It's supposed to go in there. So, if you did want to swap out the visor, you can. It's just a tension thing, and then you have to replace the uh, covers. And then that's what it looks like with the optional glued on antenna and optional visor. Yeah, or as a hole like that. And then I guess there's a separate figure you could have purchased. It looks like it's all plastic. And that's the end. And I didn't see a date anywhere in the packaging of the box or this manual. So anyways, that's going into the trash. Let's see. So ending off with the box. It's a big box. You know what? Maybe you want to know how tall this is. So we know a 12 scale action figure is around 6 inches tall, or, well anyways, so, but this guy is more like 13 inches tall, a little under 13 inches, probably 13 if it was standing straight up, and that would be around 33 centimeters. And same with this scope dog, I think. With the antenna, maybe it's even tall, yeah, it's more like 36 centimeters or like 14 inches tall with the antenna up okay so again they're pretty big and so this box here it's got some cool little artwork here and it's a nice little reveal here 
I like put the box in backwards, but there's a big vacuum plastic thing here holding the robot in place. And then here, you have a cool line drawing and some features, I guess, of what the robot can do. Uh, yeah, side thing there, no date again. But here in the back, we have a bunch of stats. Let me hit refocus again. That's as good as I can focus it. Uh, overall height, like 3.8 meters in the real world or the real cartoon. Around 7 tons. Thickness of armor, 10 to 25 millimeters. So that is like a tank or old World War II tanks. I don't know about today's, it's all classified. Uh, wheels, gliding wheel speed, 42 kilometers an hour. Uh, these things have some sort of weird liquid power system. I, I don't know, I haven't researched it enough, but saying around 290 horsepower. And then the optional armaments, and then optional equipment, and special bonus parts. Okay, bottom here, just some legalese, nothing special. This side there, almost nothing here. So that is the packaging. Okay, well, pretend Bruce Lee is inside of that. I'm going to add him afterwards. And then this one actually has a Spider-Man figure in there already, if you want to look up the review of that. Maybe you can see him through there. Yeah, there's Spidey. That's an SH Figure Arts as well. Oh, man, this guy feels like he's going to fall over. It's freaking me out. Like, even just at this distance, because it's so heavy, I'm afraid it'll fall over and break. So again... B25. I have no affiliation with B25. Don't buy them if you don't want, but I gotta say, this is one a really cool, durable, well-designed toy. Well-engineered. So I have videos on these if you want to watch those. Alright guys, well, thank you for watching today, and uh, there's other brands making Votoms related stuff, so I'm pretty sure there'll be another Votoms video to come. Take care guys. Bye.